Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to Wix Wiz. Today's video is the first video in a three-part series about dates and time in Wix. And we're going to be talking about dates and time with no code, which is going to be this video. And we're going to talk about using dates and times with Velo. And finally, we're going to build a project using a lot of dates and times so you can go ahead and practice that. So in this first video, I'm going to be talking about how to create a form, a custom form, which includes dates and times, how to store it in a collection, and then go ahead and display that on your website. So let's get started. So ironically, the first thing that we're going to want to do when building a no-code date or time input is to go to dev mode and turn it on. And the reason we're going to be doing that is we want access to the input elements on our Wix website. And you only gain access to those elements once you turn on dev mode. So even though we're not using any code at the moment, uh, I can even just go ahead and turn dev mode back off after that. But now you'll see that over here, if I go to add elements, I will have this input option over here. And you won't have that unless you've turned on dev mode at least once on your site. So unless you're building using a Wix form and then this tutorial really isn't so relevant, even if you're using no code, you're going to want to turn dev mode on. Now, once we've turned it on, so we have access to all these inputs. And today we're focusing on date and time inputs. So those are over here. And we basically have two kinds of inputs that are related to dates and times. And one is the date picker. So let me just add one of these to the site. And the other one is the time picker. I'm going to go over here and select one of these time pickers. OK. And often these will be used together. Uh, so if we want to provide a date and a time of something, then we can use these together, or they can use be used separately if we just want to provide a date or just a time. And if we pop into this and go into the settings, uh, then we have some of the standard field settings like field title. So let's say uh, birthday, and then, whoops, birthday. Why doesn't type in A? There, birthday, and then somebody can select their birthday. For example, if you're building a custom form, uh, you can choose the initial text. So either nothing, so it won't show you a date at all. It will show today's date, or you can choose a placeholder date. So for example, you know, I just want to choose, I don't know, 7, 7, 23, and that will be the placeholder date. Uh, required and read only, those are uh, both standard. And lastly, we have the date format. Uh, so depending on the region you're in and your personal preferences, you might want to choose one of these. So one more cool thing that we have here is that except for the input fields, uh, we also have the calendar settings. And this really helps us control what the viewer sees when they open the calendar and what dates they can choose from. So you can choose to either display or not display past dates and future dates. Um, so for example, if you're asking for somebody to choose a birthday, then you might want to only show past dates. But if you're asking them for a date where they want to rent a car, then you'll only show them future dates. And in some cases, you might want to show both. You can decide what day of the week the week starts on, so Sunday or Monday. You can choose active days. So you can say, OK, let's say I have off on Tuesday and Friday. And I don't want people to be able to choose that date for a meeting or something along those lines. So you can change that here. You can set avail availability dates. So I can say, OK, I'm only available from, let's say, April 18th to April 20th. Those are the dates that people can choose from. And then if I go ahead here into preview mode, then you'll see that only those three dates are available. You can also do the other way around, where you will decide that, for example, I'm available on all dates, but I have some unavailability because I'm going on vacation and would work in a similar manner. So those are the settings. Uh, and you'll also have some, you know, some styling options here in terms of layout. Um, so you can just have the date in the middle or on this side. And that might depend on what uh, the language direction is that you're using. So if you're writing with a language like Arabic, you might want to put it on the other side. Uh, that's really a UI thing. Uh, it won't change, none of these will change the functionality of how the date picker actually works. In terms of the time picker, so over here we also have some settings. And we can choose here a, a title as well. So 
let's say, start time for something. And here we can choose the format. So we could choose 12 hour or 24 hour. Uh, so when it's 24 hour, it won't show AM, PM. And when it's 12 hour, you'll have the uh, AM, PM displayed here. And you can choose how people will input it. So if it's text only, then people can directly go ahead and input a time. So let's just go into preview mode and see what that looks like. So I can go in here and I can change the time by hand. So I can just type 40 here, and then it'll change the time like that. I can change to the other format, which is stepper, uh, which will kind of let people step through the times by clicking up and down. And the last one will be a drop down. So there'll be like a drop down with lots of different times. And we can go ahead and also pick the time increments. So if I choose 15 minutes, then there'll be a drop down with increments every 15 minutes. And then you can change this, for example, to 30 minutes or 45 minutes or whatever you want the increments to be. Uh, you can also here add available hours or not available hours. Um, so if I add here, for example, that my availability is from you know, 9, let's say 9, this needs to be Time needs to show hours and minutes to separate by a colon. Okay, that's what I did. So let's do nine to five. Why is this one no good? I think this might need to be a zero here, zero nine. Yeah, like that. Okay, so that's something you might have gotten stuck on if you have been hadn't watched this video. So uh, you're already getting some value here. Um, so nine to five, and then if I go here into preview mode then you'll see that I can only pick times here between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. at the increments that I had specified. Okay, so those are just some of the settings that we can play around with in terms of uh, date and time. Uh, there's a little more here if you want to take a peek, but I kind of want to get to the juice of this, which is how do we actually store a date and time uh, in a database? So if I go and I add a collection, I'm going to create a collection, get started. And I'm just going to call this birthdays. Okay, we're going to create an example like birthday log. So here we could have the title. And here, in order to store a date and time, we have several options. Okay, so here we have date and time. So if I pick time, then it, this will store just a time. And if I pick date, then I have the option to include a time field. So this will store date and time together. So I can go ahead and click Include Time Field and go ahead and click Save. And this is now a date input with both date and time. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a regular time field. And I'm going to add a regular date field just so we can compare all of these, even though they might not be necessary in a real life situation. And you can also give these names, of course, which I didn't. Uh, so for example, I can name this field something else. The, the key is already set here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and actually delete these fields, because I do want to give them names. Let's go ahead and delete those, and I'll add them back in. Yeah, so let's add one field for the birth date. And this will be a plain date field. And this will be, let's say, birth time. And this will be, whoops, not text, but let's say date with time. This will be party time. OK, so like, let's say that's the time of a birthday party. <laughs> so I'm going to put that in here. Um, and let's head back to our site. And we're going to set up a very simple form. So I'm going to add here a Submit button. And I'm going to refresh this, because you could see that the editor went slightly out of sync here. Uh, like The elements are not selecting where they are. Happens from time to time on Wix. Uh, all you have to do is just go and hit that refresh button. So I'm going to go and do that and be right back. OK, so we're back here after a refresh and everything is back in order. So let's finish setting up our form. 
So we said that we wanted to have one input with the birth day. We wanted to have one input with the birth time. So I'm just going to call this birth time. And let's, this will be 12 hour format. And let's have it as a text only one. And the increments will be one minute increments. Okay, so people can pick the exact time that they were born. And this field will be required. This field is already required. And I'm going to add one more date field. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to add one more time field. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to put them side by side. And this is going to be the party time. So party date and party time. And the party will be 12 hour format, but it's going to be a stepper. And I'm going to do half an hour increments. And I'm going to get rid of this availability. And I'm going to get rid of the availability here as well, because people can be born at any time. <laughs> they can be born except from 9 to 5. Uh, and this will be our submit button. Excellent. And in order to save this all to a database, what we have to do is add a data set. So I'm going to go over here, Content Manager, and add Content Elements. And I'm going to add a data set. And this data set is going to be connected to our birthdays data set. And it's going to be a write-only data set. Okay, so we're going to be using this in order to submit the data set. I'm kind of assuming that you've used data sets before. You have a basic understanding of this, and you're just really focusing on how to use it for dates at the moment. Uh, if you have no idea how to use data sets, I have some other videos which talk about basic managing of collections and data in Wix using data sets. So I do recommend checking those out. And here, what we need to do now is basically link each of these to the data set uh, to the field that we want them to submit to. So the birthday will be linking to the birth date. Okay, so you can see here that we can choose either this one because they both of these have dates. So this one has a date and time, and this one has a birth date. So if I connect this one just to the birth date, then that'll connect. And I'm going to connect this one to the birth time. So connect this to birth time. And I'm going to connect this now and this both to the same field. Okay, so this will be the date for the field, and this will be the time for the field. So I'm going to connect this to party time, which is date and time. And I can go here and connect this one also to the same date and time. Okay, so same date and time here. So now what happens is when we submit the form, these will combine into one, and this will essentially be a date with this time. Uh, so we'll see it working in a moment, and this will be the submit button for our collection. So the click action will be submit. And let's add a success message just so we can see that it's all working. OK, so we have our basic form set up. So let's try it now. I'm going to go into preview mode. And let's pick a date for the birthday. So I'm going to go ahead and let's say born in 1993, March 11th. OK, so that's the birthday and the time. Uh, now it's just displaying the time here, but I'm going to change it. Let's say I was born at 9. 50 a.m. And my party, so my party is not going to be on my birthday because I'm busy on that day. So the party will be on April 13th, and it will be starting at, let's say, I don't know. Oh, this, I would have wanted it to be at a round hour. It's a little weird here that it is at, yeah, so let's say 5.30 p.m. My party starting because I don't want it to go too late. And then I can go ahead and click Submit and the content has been submitted. So let's go back to the editor and go to our database and see what happened. So here we can see the just the date field. So you see it's displaying you know March 11th, 1993 and here we have now uh, the time, okay, the birth time and here we have the date and time together. Okay, so with April 13th, 5:30 p.m., that's the time of the party. OK, so these are the three different options that we have for storing dates and times in a data set. And now we're going to talk about how we can display these times, OK, because sometimes we don't only want to collect data on our site, we also want to display it. 
So let's say we're going to create pages for people to kind of view the birth date, the birth time, and the party time. And that's a link that you can share with a friend or something. And it's a birthday sharing website. Okay, that's what we're building. So here I'm just going to add a title for as test, uh, just that when we build out the dynamic pages, we can build it. Uh, it'll have a, a tangible URL. And you could also have added like another field here to submit a name along with the birthdays. I'm just focusing on dates here, so didn't add that. So let's go ahead and turn this into dynamic pages. So I'm going to add a dynamic item page. And now here, so we have a birthday item. And I'm going to get rid of all the boilerplate stuff that comes here with the page. And I'm just going to be adding some text. So let's go ahead and add just a plain paragraph here. And let's say this will be the birth day. And then over here, we'll have the actual date. And let's copy these over as well. It's not going to be very aesthetic, but it'll work. Here we're going to have the birth time. And this will be time. And the last thing that we're going to have is when the party is. So party, date, and time. And this will be date and time. And now we need to collect, uh, connect sorry, everything to our database. So I'm going to click here on the date. And I'm going to go and connect it to our party date. OK, birth date over here. And you'll see that we get an option to choose how we want to format it. OK, so it could be long date. Uh, it could be, yeah, I mean, now you see it in Spanish, actually, because I am in Spain. Uh, so yeah, it, and I just created this site. So Wix obviously assumes that I speak Spanish, which I do a little. But that's not the language that I would have wanted my site to be in. Uh, or we could choose short date. And here, it's just giving a preview of you know, what these would look like. Uh, and you can choose which option you want. And for the time, OK, so we can connect it to our party. Sorry, not our party time, but birth. Uh, why can't I connect it to birth time? Uh, that's a good question. So look into that in a moment. But let's go ahead and connect our date and time. And I'm going to go ahead and connect that here. OK, so we could have long date time. Uh, we could have medium time. We could have long time. Basically, you can go through each one of these as a different kind of setting, a different way of presenting the dates and times. Uh, and you can choose whichever one you want to display here. There's no right or wrong. And yeah, so you could even, if you wanted to technically, you could split this up into two displays. So I can have one that displays just the date. And then I can have this, and I can connect it to the same party time. But instead of displaying the date, I'll just display the time. So let's say I choose long time. OK, and these are both connected to the same data point. So this is showing me April 13th, and this is showing me the time, and they're both connected to the same one. And now I'm going to figure out why this time is not connecting here. So I went down the Wix community forums and Velo forums rabbit hole, and it turns out that this is indeed a problem. Uh, so we're not the only ones that have a problem connecting between a text box and our time field. And I want to present two alternatives to this. So one would be to actually store times as a date and time field. OK, so like we did here, but instead of storing a specific date, we could just not store a date at all and just store the time. And then, as you see here, we can really split up the date and time and only present the time. So that could be one option for storing and presenting only times. The other option would be to actually use the time inputs. So I can go ahead and add an element here. And let's choose this time input. And what I can do is connect this to the birth time. And since this is a read-only data set, OK, you can see here read-only, it kind of grays out. But if I go here into the design, and I customize it, and I go to the disabled option, 
Uh, and the reason it's disabled is because this is an input and we're using a read-only data set. So it's disabled. It can't actually submit data, but I can make it look as if it's just data by changing this text, let's say, to black. And I could even go ahead and get rid of the border if I want to. And then basically this is just a time display. Okay, so that's another option for displaying time if you so choose. Uh, obviously, uh, once you start to go towards the coding options, then you get full flexibility and you can really use Velo to retrieve the dates from the database and choose how they're displayed on the website. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial. Uh, so if you like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave those in the comments below. And I will see you next time for the Velo tutorial. Thank you.